My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. I've been using Adobe products since about 1994, when I bought a PowerPC 6100, and I think I was probably running Photoshop version 2 at that point. In the last few years, I've been running CS6. This was the last version of the Adobe suite where you paid for it once and you just used it. I've known for a long time that 64-bit is the way to go and Catalina was going to happen eventually. USB-C and Thunderbolt is the way to go. There's no way in hell that I'm paying the Adobe Mafia a monthly fee to use their products. I've had a number of Wacom products over the years, starting with an Intuos 3 that I eventually converted into a touchscreen. Uh, and then I bought a Cintiq, uh, the one that you see here, which I really liked. It was just big and bulky. Uh, but there were a number of things that were really good about that product. And that had the controls built into it. Uh, Parallax was terrible, of course, where you put the pen on the screen was never where it actually drew on the surface of course uh, and then I end up getting this 16 inch Cintiq uh, which I never really liked just subpar garbage old technology just completely underwhelmed by it never worked out for me really never liked it for a number of reasons the Cintiq 16-inch Touch Pro was not cheap. The software was buggy and never worked right. I'm not sure if you can see this, but as soon as you use the pen for the first time, the desk, the Wacom Desktop Center starts all by itself. <laughs> the cables. Oh my gosh. Could you make them any stiffer so they worked any less better when you swung and moved your tablet around on your desk? Come on. No, seriously, this piece of shit had a fan in it. You can buy an Android tablet, Pixel Slate, that doesn't have a fan in it for a third of the cost of this thing. I mean, this thing fan would come on instantly. It'd drive me crazy. All you had to do was plug it in and the fan would come on. And then there's the Wacom remote. It used to be built into the old Cintiqs, but for whatever reason, they took it out. $99 extra. And check this out. While the Cintiq had a USB-C cables, the remote used micro USB to charge it up. And the dongle was standard regular USB. The thing was an ergonomic nightmare. It wouldn't sit on your desk straight and there was no way to grab it because you couldn't attach it onto your Cintiq. And they only had two little legs built in. I had to build my own stand to use it as a monitor. Ah, so frustrating. Anyway, enter Sidecar. I think it's interesting that Apple actually shows Affinity Photo here in this shot on their website for software to use. I do own an iPad Mini 5. Now you can draw on these. The original pencil is supported on this, but it's a little bit small for my needs. I do tend to draw on a smaller scale, but I want something a little bit bigger to draw on. Listed that shit on eBay and sold it for $1,000. $100 less than I bought it for on eBay two or three years ago, and I sold the remote for the 99 bucks, which is what you buy it for new. Holds its value well, at least. What am I gonna get instead? iPad Pro, 12 inch, 12.9 actually. Let's check it out for all you unboxing ASMR freaks.
This thing is pretty big. It's not nearly as portable as the Mini is. The Mini, I can put in my back pocket, carry around with me in the shop or here in the studio, where I'm going, works great for a portable device. This, not a portable device, no. I mean, I carry it around and move it around, but it's awkward, you know, using the keyboard on the screen. Uh, yeah, face ID, let's see if we can get that to work. Uh, keyboard on the screen is difficult. You really can barely get your fingers across here for a keyboard. It's not ideal. Uh, I would not say this is a portable or a mobile tablet. Yeah, you can stick it in your bag and take it with you and work on the go, and it's very powerful and everything. But for just dragging around the office, that's not what I use it for. You know, that's not what I bought it for. I use it for sketching. So let's try it out for sketching. We're going to test it out wired and wirelessly. And we'll try the wireless option first. Here I'm just marking up a drawing to show you how the wireless option works. It works fine for just markups like this. And you're going to see here a little bit of lag where the text right here nah, doesn't show up. It still registers everything. <clears throat> But there's definitely a little bit of a lag wirelessly. So I don't know if this is... I do have an older Wi-Fi system. Um, who knows? But you don't, you don't have any of that when you have a wired connection. So let's check out a wired connected uh, connection right here. Uh, plugged in directly. And I'm basically going to write the same thing that I wrote before. And you can see that there's no lag here. Uh when I'm writing in some text on the screen. And I'm not having any issues with uh, palm rejection either. The nice thing too is this is about the size of a piece of paper for me and uh, so it works well on my desk just like drawing on a little stack or a pad of paper like I normally would. Now you may say you could just get the Affinity app for your iPad and you could. But that's a shitty workflow. That means you're going to have the file in multiple places. And I don't want that. I want one file that I can access for whatever it is that I'm doing, whether it's video editing or sketching or whatever. I don't want to save it in iCloud and then have to move it back onto my portable drive or onto my machine. So that's uh, where Sidecar uh, is going to work for me. I, like I said, I'm not interested in sketching on my couch, as that is an ergonomic nightmare uh, as well. And while it is convenient and it would be possible, I am not interested in anything like that. This thing functions okay wirelessly, quite good plugged in wired, and that's a huge ergonomic improvement over the Wacom. Uh, Palm rejection is better, pinch to zoom is better, and that's something that Wacom was doing way before Apple ever was. So shame on you, Wacom. You can't get those basic software things right, and it's the main reason why I left Wacom. I'm super happy I switched to this. Functionality is better. It's not perfect. There are still things that uh, need adjusting from Apple. You know, someday they'll maybe integrate uh, full touch capability into the Mac OS someday. Who knows? They'll come to their senses. But for right now, this is better than the Cintiq. It still has some issues. Uh, ergonomically, it works better. Uh, the cable, the one cable solution is just way better than anything that uh, Wacom had. There's no fan. It's lighter. It's smaller, uh, more agile, versatile, uh, just functions better. Uh, so I'm very happy about that. Um, I would love to have some integrated controls, but uh, Affinity does have those controls at the bottom. I end up using the keyboard for most of that stuff. So it's maybe just a little adjustment on my part, but I'm very happy to switch 
from that uh, Cintiq 16 inch Pro to this iPad. Uh, so for sketching, it works quite well. In next week's video, we're gonna take a look at how to make this iPad function better in my studio design environment for what I do every single day, uh, how to make this thing uh, function and be more useful uh, for my day-to-day -day ergonomic and uh, design routines. So stick around for that. Thanks for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Hey, and don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook sometimes, Twitter usually, and now Instagram. Rock on. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.